A reading from the Brazilian novel, Other Songs by Maria Valeria Rezende. Again, I turned to observe the face of the man sitting across the narrow eye of the bus that carries me once more somewhere across the backlands. I saw him through the window when he appeared at the edge of the world and waved, coming out of nowhere, no human dwell in sight, emerging from the desert in the dense tangle of brambles and cactuses. The bus stopped with a wheeze and he got on. A big stocky man smelling like tanned leather, sweat and tobacco. And I guessed he was coming, going to come sit next to me despite all the other empty seats. That smell certainly drifts from my memory because the man next to me is dressed like a rodeo cowboy and smells like cheap perfume. Since he sat down, he's held his back erect, his hands resting on his knees and eyes fixed on the back of the seat in front of him. It's hard to stop staring, especially when his image, seen against the light, morphs into the silhouette of a man in leather chaps, jacket, and hat, a statue encased in leather that stirs up old memories. Now that the sun is behind the ragged clouds just above the horizon, shading the world in tones of red, the cowboy stands out, black like a woodcut against the scarlet background. I realize I feel a mix of suspense and expectation. I hope and expect him to finally start singing his cattle call. For over 40 years, I've been carrying this image and song in the deepest recesses of my soul. I see myself young again, sitting on the fallen trunk of a coconut tree, the lay in front of the house where I was going to live in that remote little village whose name explained its very reason to exist. Wells Spring, like so many other minuscule oases across the, those vast arid lands. I rested my back against the whitewashed wall where the sun had been hitting until just minutes before. Sitting like that, I found the only relief available from the heat that had struck me since early morning when I climbed down from the rickety truck that brought me to my exile. In that distant evening, after having spent all day lying in the hammock, exhausted from the long trip, I couldn't do anything beyond dragging myself to the drunk, to the front door. There I stood staring vaguely outside through a filter of salty liquid about to dissolve and run down the dry, brittle parchment that my face had become. The few white houses, their windows and doors shut, clung together as if scared of the vast and arid space all around. Between the houses, the wide street of white sand looked more like salt flats than like the northeastern Sertão, while sparse, almost diaphanous mesquite trees insisted on passing for the only green in that gray and white scenario. Right then, I seriously doubted those backlands would ever turn into the ocean, as people would used to say. All the hopes I brought in my luggage seemed more fragile than those squalid trees and unable to resist even one day in the bleakness of that place. The view from the front of my house revealed the solid silence of a late Sunday afternoon in a world that had nothing, not a soul, and it seemed not even a creator. I was the only one there, immersed in an absolute void, immobilized, embedded within that thick heat, like a fossil on a stone. Was this the end of the world where everything stops and any struggle becomes meaningless? Reason told me nothing, while my body was overcome by the lethargy of a lizard on a rock, ready to accept that nothing was going to change. I felt no drive, no desire to attempt, even the slightest movement. I could already see myself drowning in tears from the disappointment of finding nothing at the end of a very long and risky trip, when suddenly a faraway song reverberated in the air, 
a distinct sound, completely different from everything I knew and yet familiar, which I recognized after my initial surprise, a human voice. The horizon now looked as if the song had sent up a geyser of crimson color into the air, filling the sky all the way to where, until then, I'd been alone and morphed into mineral, coloring me and everything else in shades of red. As the sun set, a voice and then another and another echoed the first one I'd barely noticed. They reached me from all sides as if flowing down from the heavens in successive waves, each one stronger than the other. Who is singing? Who, oh, if all I see is a deserted road that disappears as the crimson sunset darkens? Whose song is this? Is it coming from my imagination, exacerbated by the heat, the aridness, and my sense of estrangement? Then I saw them, one by one, right in front of me, black silhouettes against the sky like cut-out figures from a Cordell pamphlet. They arrived on their horses with their cattle. Their herding chorus accompanied by the rattle of the cowbells, majestically moving about in their rustic leather armors, sheer beauty made of shadows and sounds.